friends we are discussing about the classification of rock broadly and that we are discussing the sedimentary rocks how they are classified into the clastic chemically formed organically formed just now we have mentioned how chemical sedimentary rocks are formed i was giving the example of a bowl of water salt evaporation salt accumulation similar process also operate in nature all the dissolved material from the land what happens river is carrying a fresh water into the sea during this process what must have happened the fresh water is a taste is different when it reaches the sea its a taste is different we call saline water means so much of salt dissolved in the sea water what may happen to this one day it has to be get deposited correct and thus whatever the dissolved materials carried by river added to the sea in the sea at under different condition if they are deposited and under different condition they are present and for a longer time undisturbed they may even precipitate their precipitation is of course controlled by change in environment system there such material which are chemically precipitated can form a kind of rock called organically formed sedimentary rock for example i show you a rock i'm just brought a small sample here you find the dark layer the white layer again dark layer this is a one kind of sediment deposited another kind of deposited whether it was deposited like this deposited like this leave it that is not the question we may have this layer first formed and then this layer and this often in nature it operates cyclically if they do not operate cyclically entire mass may be made up of one composition like cal limestone deposited if alternate layers this one iron rich this is a silica rich rhythmically if there is a change in cyclic change in condition in one season this can be deposited in another season this can be deposited another season again this is deposited this happen if there is a periodical cyclic change in the condition of the depositional site that is all they result in chemically formed sedimentary rock friends we have a message here if a particular set of condition exist for a long time a thick deposit of something can form like evaporites gypsum limestone phosphate or something if this kind of alternate layer alternate layer this this one layer this one layer this one none of these are thick enough economically viable although they may be individually useful economically extraction is difficult then how it will be how nature can make it let us see later there are some materials which are not deposited by this way because a deposition this way requires a change in physico chemical condition if sea water remains in the same condition there is no change in physico chemical condition how a material in a solution can get precipitated not possible at all fortunately there are certain organic materials organisms bacteria example in sea water there is a lot of calcium but there are kind of organisms they require calcium to build their life activities like shell 
and they absorb the dissolved carbonates to build their life activity and form thin or thick coating of shell. So, dissolved calcium carbonate now get deposited in the form of shell. This is through the mediation of organic activity, some living organisms in the sea are responsible for precipitation of dissolved this material into the seabed. There are bacteria also for example, we call bog iron that is a kind of a bacteria requires iron to build their life activities. Now, they can secrete the iron from dissolved sea water for their life activities. Bacteria say lying on the seabed, they require this iron and they are able to secrete this. It is iron get deposited through the operation of this bacterial activity. Yes, these are organic activity. There is another called diatom we call a kind of bacteria they absorb SiO2 silicon dioxide for their life activities. They are so simple primitives, they are happy with only silicon, iron, but we need variety of vitamin, this, this, that, everything. So, those primitive lives may absorb, secrete only one or the other material for their life activity and only that material can be get deposited. In the sample I have shown, for example, I have silica and iron, perhaps this bacteria responsible for iron deposition, another bacteria responsible for this because of change in the chemical environment, once upon a time perhaps the diatoms were active more in number, they have deposited silica but due to change in environment, they did not sustain. Perhaps in that condition, another type of bacteria must have sustained, they must have deposited. All this can happen. Therefore, friends, it is there are some bacteria, organic activities, they also responsible. We have another lignite, anthracite, bituminous, coal is another. This is, suppose we have lot of tree, vegetal matter we call forest, they can be get washed by heavy floods etc, can get deposited in a basin, in a depression and there these all woody materials get deposited. On them there may be some kind of sand, mud can get deposited. They apply pressure on them. Due to the pressure and temperature, this woody material get decomposed and get altered and enriched is some material like carbon, coal, lignites are formed. These are all organic activity, living things now became a rock or mineral like. A rock formed by virtue of bacterial activity, by virtue of organic activity, these are organically formed sedimentary rocks. Yes, we have this kind of problem, this kind of problem, this kind of problem. Each one has a different application and all they have formed in a different process. Yes, just now I have mentioned in the previous slide, igneous rocks can be classified into either basis where they depose, where they formed or what is their composition. It is a interest of a different people. Yes, you as a civil engineer may be concerned with the properties of the rocks, their crushing strength, their shear resistance, uh, etc., their polishing, decorative, you are interested in that. Therefore, 
you may prefer this kind of classification. There is a one more person who is interested. He wants to use the rock for architectural purpose, polish them for decorative purpose, for flooring. His interest is something different. Or he has to use a particular rock in an industrial environment. I give a small example. I do not mention the name of the industrial place. It was a chemical industry. They were, they have used the locally available material we call phyllite or a kind of material. That material rock was consisting so much of a pyrite, FES2 yesterday we have quoted. That pyrite is very sensitive for acidic environment, FES2 under acidic environment can undergo react with water and FES that can form H2SO4. It is sulfuric acid, it is a strong acid, it can further attack therefore flooring material lost within no time in a very short span of time they had to replace entire. On the other hand, the Taj Mahal we talk about hundreds of years it was so beautiful, but in recent years we read in newspaper Taj Mahal is losing its beauty because of the hundreds of reliance industries there emitting carbon dioxide, acidic rain this and that. It means composition of the rock is also very important for someone, especially architect. Therefore, he is not worried about this kind of classification. He is interested in this. We are providing you both. In general, igneous rocks can be classified into hippavazal, plutonic and volcanic. What is hippavazal? If this is the cross section of the earth crust, if magma formed here and they intrude and solidify, it is at a great depth that is a plutonic condition. I have said what is plutonic? Great depth, high pressure, high temperature. What is the pressure? It is a uniform pressure. Pressure from all the side is more or less uniform. Any increase in depth has insignificant influence. Therefore, it is somewhat similar to hydrostatic pressure. We call uniform pressure hydrostatic pressure. The condition is prevailing at that depth and we call them a plutonic. In simple, it is a great depth. So, rocks may be formed at that depth we call a plutonic or if magma did not solidify here, continued its journey from here and solidified here. But this depth is not that as on the earth, not that high pressure as we have here. It is in between, this we call hyperabyssal. Example is a dolerite, forget at this stage, example is a granite and volcanic basalt, we come to this little later further more detail. At this depth, what may happen? Intermediate condition that is neither too high pressure, but not low also. Cooling condition is no doubt a slow, but not that slow as here, not that rapid like here in between we have a rock formed, what may happen, they acquire a different physical properties and that is important for us. And volcanic rock directly formed on the surface or very close to the surface, just below the soil layer as good as it is surface itself. Through this soil, atmosphere, uh, gases can escape, water can escape. Therefore, it is as good as surface condition, volcanic. We can classify igneous rocks depending on 
the more where they form the physical or pressure temperature condition physical chemical condition are different here different here different here in the sense here what is the chemical condition water vapor present the gases present in the magma can escape once they can escape the hot liquid now is impoverished decreased lost low content of volatile matter it become more viscous fluid viscosity is high therefore viscosity is high flow condition is different physical condition is different crystallization process is different obviously they get a different physical property on the other hand here those gases which were present or the water vapor which were present could not escape from here to here they are still trapped but their temperature condition is a different temperature is one important factor that determines the crystallization solidification process therefore obviously physical condition is different and they develop a different set of characteristics therefore their characters differ depending on where they formed this is one condition we classify another just now we have said silica based on more than 65% we call acidic intermediate friends don't get confused if i have said c 65 67 75 this 55 these are common rocks we quote them as a example this is theoretically we talk this as more than 65% should be there that determines a different process okay so acidic 65% more sio2 should be there we call acidic intermediate rock between 55 to 65% silica basic ultra basic less than 45 basic 45 to 55% is basic it is all purely based on sio2 content it is true it is accompanied by if sio2 rich sio2 poor fe mg minerals are rich here they are low here so accordingly they determine the color of the rock their properties etc example for kitchen platform invariably people use black rock polished simple earlier people used to use of marble they have stopped no in the kitchen we invariably use a lemon lemon we cut the drop fall on the rock marble react marble rock get affected so that is disadvantage marble we don't use composition determines we use this kind of rock there this kind reason suppose we the kitchen platform anything small particle fall a rice green fall the background is a dark i can easily see the background is a light on a light background a rice particle fall sugar particle salt i cannot see it so i cannot keep it clean so that easily also therefore i do not prefer i prefer it not that i should not do it is all individual choice but preferably we use here on the other hand for my wall decorative for flooring purpose i prefer this light color it gives more light to my room therefore for facing and decorative purpose i prefer this whereas for my other purpose i very dark color not attractive 
I use them for foundation, let it be underground, not exposed, not seen. Therefore, depends on my purpose, I can place them where they should be. Yes, ultra basic rock, too dark color, not good for decorative purpose. These are good for my kitchen platform, neither too dark and require more light nor too white where something I cannot see. This is white, it can light color, it can give a better light. Yes, it depends on my choice, I can select. Thus, depends on our purpose, we can have the classification. Both are important for civil engineer. A civil engineer uses the rocks in foundation construction, so many aggregates, other activities, there their property matters. Whereas, in this kind of application, decorative purpose, dimensional, architectural work, monumental work, look also matters. Therefore, I go for this. Both are important for us. Friends, no. Just now I have mentioned the classification of rocks based on where they form magma, from here they form plutonic, from here hepavizal, here they volcanic. It is based on where they formed. Where they form also determine their physical properties just now I have said. I have mentioned only the pressure temperature condition how it does not restrict to that. There are many more other parameters that decide their properties. It means we are going little deeper. Based on the genetic mode, we have a plutonic rock, common example granite, gabbro, diorite, norite. Just now we have mentioned in my previous just these, 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 some of these are good for that, good for that, like that. Yes, plutonic rocks are like this. This should be, sorry, A, small change, hippabazal rock, it should be P A, small correction friends. Hippabazal rocks, example is a dolerite, granite porphyry, I have introduced porphyry, what it means. Cyanite porphyry, diorite porphyry and pegmatites, I call them as hippabazal rock. Porphyry, I have introduced a new term for this rock. What do I mean porphyry? It is simple, do not get confused. If a magma is crystallizing here, this I draw here, this magma, plutonic, magma solidified, hippa bezel. If this is formed here, pressure, temperature are not lost that easily. That condition remains same for a longer period. Therefore, cooling is so slow. Thousands of years hundreds are not hundred, several thousands of years they require to solidify, so slow cooling. There are advantages, what is that? When cooling is so slow, materials from either side ions or elements can come to the point where crystallization is a taking place. So, as a result, they have chances to become fully developed crystal. They become crystalline material and they can also develop sufficiently, they grow in their size. Unfortunately, the pressure is so high, pressure is so high, they are forced to develop in a constrained space. 
space problem is also there. At the same time, condition is conducive for the growth. What is in between? Neither they can grow to very large size just because low cooling, because of a pressure, there is a space constraint. Same time, there are such several other minerals are also growing simultaneously. There is a competition for a given element. Therefore, if a mineral SiO2 example SiO2, this is a mineral called quartz. We have called feldspar K A L S S I S I O to S I O like A L to S I T O eight like that. We have this is a feldspar mineral. I am not just uh, balancing the equation. K A L to S I T O eight is the general formula of a feldspar. K A L to SI3 O8, okay. That is the feldspar mineral. F E L S P A R feldspar mineral. A granite contains nearly 40% of quartz, 40% of feldspar. Feldspar also requires SiO2 to form. Quartz also require SiO2. Here also SiO8. Okay. A L to I have S I. Feldspar also require S I oxygen. Quartz also require S I and oxygen. There may be another mineral example in a granite that does not happen. In some gabbro it happens F E M G S I O4 example. See, Fe also require Mg, also require both require Si and S. Therefore, there is a competition for a given element. Therefore, when there is a competition for a given element, no mineral can develop into, cannot be satisfied. Therefore, they cannot develop it to the way they want. As a result of this competition, if this is one mineral, then maybe this is another mineral, this is another mineral, this may be another mineral. What do you find? There is an interpenetration of different minerals and therefore, they become and they develop a different property. Plutonic rocks have this kind of habit that is rock mass is entirely crystalline, but crystal shapes are irregular at the most partially regular. Irregular partially they may develop means only this part they may develop into proper shape like that, partial. Partially develop, but they are all of equal size more or less. Everyone has equal opportunity. Plutonic igneous rocks are thoroughly crystalline. They are made up of such interlocking minerals, more or less of equal size thoroughly crystalline, interlocking, neither too big nor too small. Such rock is plutonic rock. Friends, we do have advantage. Nature is so kind for us. Such rocks are suitable for carving. Humpy we must have seen. They have used granite. I have to chisel out, carve something beautiful if there is one large grain, one small grain chipping, if I have to, what may happen? Very difficult. While chipping one large grain escapes out, depression, depression, cavities. It does not happen with the plutonic rocks. 
they are more suitable for carving isn't it another advantage all the grains are more or less of equal size if a pressure is applied it is uniformly distributed it depends on the size therefore there is a no uneven distribution of a pressure in plutonic rock this is another character they form at a great depth they have learned to sustain high pressure because they have formed in very high pressure therefore such rocks plutonic rocks are able to withstand high pressure therefore they have high crushing strength high shearing strength also they cannot slip they have high crushing strength high shearing strength high load bearing capacity uniform grain size equal distribution of load plus because of interlocking there is no space in between no gap water cannot enter they are water proof no water can enter at all that is the advantage of plutonic rock see the character we shall come to the hypa basal rock what is hypa basal rock suppose i have suppose i have this is the depth a magma formed from the plutonic rock come here intermediate depth this we call hypa basal rock what is the hypa basal rock what may happen suppose a magma started traveling from here to here during that process they may have experienced some cooling some loss of temperature and some process crystallization may have initiated so they did not solidify totally here again they moved here so again they from here to they moved here they have developed some crystals that was corresponding to this condition now they are here little lower pressure little higher temperature obviously crystallization cooling system condition is different and they have to develop their size their shape all depending on the condition they are now little lower pressure yes possible to grow little higher temperature they have to crystallize immediately otherwise they get solidified the temperature fall is so rapid therefore according to that condition there are some minerals larger in size some minerals are smaller in size therefore plutonic rocks if they have more or less of equal size hypa basal rocks there are some grains larger in size and some grains are smaller in size unequal size of the mineral those grains which have grown to a larger perhaps they started first and relatively it was a fluid and they had more liberty opportunity to develop into proper size proper shape therefore most often these grains are well shaped whereas this smaller particles are smaller size irregular shape now at the contact between these the well shaped contact poorly shaped minerals if they come in contact in one side their bonding is weak but the smaller particles they are in good contact with the surrounding in penetration interpenetration happens between among them but small particle and larger particle interpenetration is not possible because it is already a solid developed proper shape therefore some particles between among themselves good binding 
interpreted between this and this, not that high bonding, poor. What happens? It is obviously inferior compared to the plutonic condition. Therefore, if I have this rock, subject them to pressure, obviously there is unequal distribution of the load. This is something unwanted. I have a rock, I have to use them as a foundation of major dam like gravity dam, huge dam foundation. If uneven distribution of the load take place, unequal settlement also. Unequal distribution of load, unequal settlement bed compaction may lead to crack. Crack is nothing but a weak point in a rock. Therefore, we have the possibility of weakness that develop. Obviously, that is inferior. Even that is inferior even for smooth carving. While carving, this particle can escape. Difficult to control. If a small particle escapes, I have a control. I can repair it, I can do it. It means they are not suitable for smooth carving. This is suitable for smooth carving. Therefore, I have certain limitation. Because of this unequal size, unequal size, porphyry In all respect, in terms of chemical composition, it may be similar to that. Similar quartz, similar feldspar may be present, but the size is different. Their relation with the, their neighboring particle is different. Therefore, they become little inferior in their property. Therefore, hippopotamus rocks are little less attractive. Of course, for facing, no, there is no load comes. Kitchen platform, no problem. Flooring, no problem. Load does not come. They can take equally good polish if their composition satisfies. Therefore, this genetic classification gives many insight for their suitable application. Now, let us come to volcanic rock. What is that volcanic? Magma comes to the surface, there they solidify. If they solidify, what happens? Lot of gases, water vapor, they escape into the air. Magma now become highly viscous, their composition changed and now no more they are magma. We call them lava. Here it was magma, here it was magma, now I call lava. Because their viscosity changed, water vapor, gases, etc., <coughs> changed. As a result, even they solidify, they develop a different property. Because of viscosity, ions and elements cannot move to the center of crystallization, they cannot develop into larger size. If at all crystallization take place, they are minutely crystalline. Somewhat we have said yesterday, crypto-crystalline, they are similar to that. They are minutely crystalline. Often solidification, cooling is so rapid that even iron and elements do not have enough time to go to the center where crystals are are developing, they do not become crystals at all, simply solidify. That is, atoms are not properly oriented. That kind of status we call amorphous substance, amorphous condition. Therefore, volcanic rocks can be minutely crystalline. Okay. It satisfies so many conditions. If it is amorphous like a glass, we also 
called glassy. Glass means very smooth surface, like edges are sharp, etc. We have seen. And if you break concentric ring, like you break the glass, broken surface, you see, they become somewhat like that. Volcanic rocks can be fine grained, crypto crystalline, glassy, amorphous. What is the message for us? We know crystalline is there is a proper regular arrangement of atoms and ions and when everything is so properly arranged for a given amount they occupy lesser volume that is Gibbs principle you apply it is more stable condition Gibbs energy principle they occupy least space for a given material. Therefore, this condition is more stable that is a crystalline condition is more stable with respect to pressure and temperature. Amorphous condition is unstable, atoms are randomly arranged what happens? Suppose they, why they have developed amorphous? The pressure and temperature condition were not conducive for them, but given the chance, if pressure and con temperature condition develop, even amorphous substance can undergo modification and develop into minute crystal this process is called de-vitrification, vitrification glassy, de-vitrification, glassy substance undergo modification develop into minute crystal. What happens? Under amorphous condition atoms were randomly arranged, under crystalline condition atoms are regularly oriented means they occupy lesser volume. Originally, this was the volume when it was a glassy. Now they have occupied this much volume because they become crystalline. What happens? This much gap? Settlement. Thus, unstable condition. Suppose I use a volcanic rock in my foundation of a major dam where high pressure develops, high pressure is accompanied by temperature they can undergo de-vitrification from glass minutely crystalline they become and they occupy smaller volume compacted and during this process the volume gap is nothing but the cracks and that is not become a weakness in our foundation. Therefore, Obviously, volcanic rocks are inferior for our construction. However, minutely crystalline, I have said, they can be of some use, limited use in our construction activity. Friends, you find this kind of classification is somewhat important. Now, I have sketched here, this is a magma, if they solidify here or somewhere here, here itself, somewhere here itself, somewhere here itself, it is a plutonic condition only. If they squeeze it out from this and intermediate depth, they form or even at this much more shallow, we call them HIPAA basal. If that comes to the surface, and they may erupt through single, we yesterday we have called fissure eruption and different type of eruption fractures, the single went a core, there are several fractures, fissure eruption etc. Thus, they reach the surface through either fissures, fractures or to a single opening, single vent and reach the surface, solidify here, they form volcanic rock. 
whether the fissures or single vent opening again they become different type of rock acquire different properties. This is a purely based on a mode of a formation. We have unequal size, more or less uniform size, very fine grained like this friends, then we have a different type of rock. Yes. Now, I have said intrusive rock, magma formed at depth and they are intruded into this depth. Now, during this process also there are differences. Why this is important for me? Ultimately, I am interested in rock, whether this way they are formed, this way are they are formed, in what way it is going to matter. Yes, friends, important. Example, you are a contractor, you have a contract to supply so much quantity of material. In a place, you have this rock, this rock, may have similar property. Based on property, you cannot judge. You have a sample of us. Yes, but how much quantity I get them in a given place, I do not know. Based on property, I do not. If I can go little more deeper into, then whether it is formed this way, this way is important for me. I am able to supply, if I do not get that much of quantity of rock, I fail to supply to a given project, what happens to my contract agreement? I am at loss now. If I know how exactly they occur in the ground, suppose I have a, this is the ground surface, if I have a rock like this, this is a HIPAA basal rock. This is from the magma and here they have solidified. This rock, this rock, if this is leave it apart, this is volcanic, but this part is a HIPAA basal. This is also a HIPAA basal. There is a difference between these two. If the same quantity of rock I have to get from here, I have to get from here. I have to go deeper, 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 deeper. Querying operation become costlier, costlier, costlier as I go deeper. If all that quantity I get at a particular depth, my cost remains the same throughout. Therefore, I will be benefited. Therefore, the mode of occurrence of rock also determines the civil engineering activities in many cases. I am not saying in every project depends on the nature of the project. We do not know which kind of project you handle tomorrow. Therefore, we also try to classify if I say I have a concordant body. Yes, immediately you guess what may be the quantity of the rock I get. If I have a discordant type of rock, you will be able to say how much quantity of rock you can get. Therefore, friends, we will now try to classify further deep, even it is a hypobasal, even it is a plutonic, even it is a volcanic, further more sophisticated classification which help us much more better way to handle our project. That is, we classify the rocks into concordant under that category, sill, lacolith, lopolith, facolith. I am sorry, I am introducing so many terms. Do not worry, we will come what are all this. Yes, a dike, volcanic plug, batholith, stock, bosses, etc. I am introducing different terms and we are refining and more deeper classification to serve everybody's need. Whether my need is this level, this level, accordingly we can adopt suitable classification. Friends, now we have tried 
classification based on where do they occur, plutonic, hippopotamus, volcanic, and how that determines their properties, but not the quantity. If I have to decide upon the quantity, I have to understand this. Friends, we shall discuss it little later.